prepping your team for end of quarter. So first I want to tell you, even if you don't have a team that you're employing, you might want to take a look at who you're working with, right? So who are your strategic partners? Who are your vendors? If you're an employee at a company, who are you interacting with daily? And who are you working with that depends on your performance and you depend on theirs? So teams are much more creative in these days than they ever have been before. And one of the most important things to recognize when you're resetting your team for a quarter is to really pay attention to what has worked well. I fall into this trap often. I am such a driver and I'm such an achiever that I want to look toward what else is possible. And I neglect, as in I have to really practice to stop and be intentional about looking at how far we've come. That is an exercise that for me, it takes a lot of intention and is really important. And that's a pro tip I wanna give you. Pay attention to how far you've come with your team and be really grateful to their execution, to their willingness to show up, to their way of being uh, present and being able to deal with issues or problems or narrow paths that come up throughout your work. And then once you've evaluated that, also take a look at where you guys want to go that may be different, just slightly micro adjustments from where you thought you were going to head. So throughout a year and even a quarter and a month, things change and we adjust and things happen that are personal to your team. Each team member has a life outside of the life they have with you and your team. There are things that they're navigating. Be sensitive and be mindful of what is happening in your team's life. You don't necessarily have to change your goals based on what your team is going through, but I would recommend paying attention to where each person's at and acknowledging that perhaps there needs to be an adjustment in the way that we're getting to the goal. So we don't necessarily have to adjust the outcome, but we might need to adjust the micro steps that we're taking to get to the outcome. And that can feel really empowering because your team will feel that you hear them, that you know them, and that you're considering them. And it feels really good to be considered. It feels really good to know that someone else is being attentive to your personal and professional needs. The other thing that's really important when you're prepping for the end of quarter is that it allows you to look toward the next quarter. So you have a vision mindset. It's like looking through a looking glass. You're narrowing the view and the perspective and you're zoning in on where you really want to go. This is a focus exercise. This is an ability to say, here's where we are and let's zoom in and look at where we want to go. It's incredibly empowering. And even if you are not the team lead, showing up to a team conversation about reviewing quarter, end of quarter and prepping for the next quarter with that empowered mindset, with the ability to know what it is that you want to do better, with your needs in mind, aligned to the desired outcome, you will show up as a leader because you will be self-leading yourself first and then giving other people on your team the opportunity to model that after you. So end of quarter reviews are really wonderful places for a team to practice leadership, to practice reviewing what is going really well and to be really super laser focused on what they want to do to get to their desired outcome.